Hey guys and gals, it's Sonia from UnrealTech.net here, a division of BlenderTech.com. I teach game development, which relies on programming experience, not in any specific programming language necessarily, but knowing how code works is fundamental to that process, which we call a video game's logic. I also teach Blender 3D Digital Art, which uses Python as its coding language to create new ways to work with 3D models. In this series, I'm going to teach you the basics of programming for someone that has absolutely no programming experience whatsoever using what I consider the easiest language to learn that gives you the most opportunities to go forward to a more advanced language sooner, Python. Python is used on websites like Dropbox and YouTube, companies such as Lucasfilms and everything in between. Fashion companies use it, Fortune 500 companies use it, all the way to advanced weather forecasting and scientific studies. It was designed in 1991 so it's fairly new and it's updated very very often. So with that boring stuff out of the way, remember our motto, create your way and let's get started. I consider Python one of the easiest languages to learn because Python's number one goal is to make its programming code as readable as possible just like we read English. The actual ones and zeros that eventually become of our work is much more complicated, but you can pretty much read Python as if you were reading instructions. Let's take a couple seconds to just look at a couple examples on their page here. So we have simple arithmetic. If we type in 1 divided by 2, we get out 0 0.5. If we type in 3 star star 3, or sorry, 2 star star 3, which is 2 to the exponent, or 2 to the power of 3, we get 8. And we also have just how simple it is. If we type in print, hello, I'm Python, it will say, hello, I'm Python. So very, very easy to learn. It has a very, very simple syntax. It doesn't require funny characters at the end of each line. We are going to need something to work with Python code, first of all. And so to be able to test our code to see what it does, we need a compiler. And a compiler compiles our code. So we're going to use Python's own compiler. It is very easy to use and will work for everything we will do in the series and more. So if you go to the Python website, python.org, then go to downloads and click on it and it should figure out which one you need. You want the one whether you're on Windows, Mac, or anything else. Now you'll notice there's Python 3 and Python 2. Python 3 uh, is a new version that reinvented the language to make it so that it can be used a bit more advanced. And Python 2.7 is more of a legacy language that is used more commonly, but it had some shortcomings. However, I suggest Python 2.7 because most of the stuff you'll read has been written for Python 2 and it's a bit simpler to use. So make sure you go ahead and download Python 2.7 and then once it's done, all you have to do is run the installer. So once it's done, we're gonna open the file. It's gonna ask us to install, we want it for all users. It's gonna ask us where, it will go to C slash Python 2.7, you can change that if you want, but you'll get this. It's fine just the way it is, hit next and it will install. And once it's done, we'll get the finish button. So now what we can do is if we go to our where we installed it, that would be C, Python 2.7. We see we have a few programs. We have Python Debian, which will do nothing if you open it, and Python. So if we open Python, you see we get this little window. And we can do things such as 1 divided by 2 to get 0. Or 1 plus 2 to get 3 or print hello, which gives us an ear. Or we can print hello the proper way and it'll give us back hello. So um, you can work in this, in this command prompt, but what Python gives you is what's called an integrated development environment. It's a very simple one, but it's gonna be more than enough for our needs. And how you access that is you go to your start menu all apps, go down to P for Python, 
And under Python 2.7, you'll see idle, Python GUI. GUI stands for graphical user interface. If you open up idle, it will give you the following screen. So as you can see, it's actually the exact same window as when we ran python.exe. It's just given us a lot more options in this whole menu bar up here. And so you can still do the same thing, such as 2 plus 5 equal to 7 print hello. Prints out hello. But what is great about the Python idle program is you can open .py files. So for example, if I right click and go file new text document and name it myprogram.py, you'll see that it becomes this little symbol. If I make it a little bit bigger, it'll be easier to see of a Python program and we can run that in idle. It'll ask us how we want to open it. And so that's how we can create Python scripts. So I already have one uh, downloaded. So just to show you how to open your Python scripts, we won't be writing in here. We'll only be compiling and running in idle. Um, I'm going to show you one more program, but you can use notepad to write them. But anyways, file, if I go open, and then I have this guest number dot py Python file. If I open it, it opens a new window and it has our entire program in here. Now we could write our code in here. Um, all we wanted, I could write anything I want. I could print something dot whatever. One plus two equals x plus y. Whatever you want. You could technically write your programs in in this uh, new window but it's mostly used for opening and then running them. So if I go run and run module, this is known as an entire Python module. Um, the hotkey is also F5, so if I press F5, it's gonna run it. And since I made a change, I have to save it, okay. So now it brings us back to our Python command window, our shell, our idle window, and we're now running our guest number.py file. So hello, what is your name, insomnia? thinking of a number between 1 and 20. Take a guess. How about 20? Too high. 1, too low. 10, too high. 5, too low. 7, too low. 9, too high. He was thinking of 8. We only get a certain number of guesses. So that's just an example of how it works. And then we're back to our prompt where we can go 2 divided by 2, 1. So the other program I wanted to introduce is if you type in your search bar for notepad plus plus and go to notepad plus plus home and then click on download and then download the notepad plus plus installer and go through the uh, instructions because notepad on itself yes I can I can write Python code in here but it's a little harder to read. However, if I take that same code and copy it and open up Notepad++, we get this. It's nothing too important on its own. It does give us a few things like it automatically creates brackets when we type in the starting bracket. It automatically creates double quotes for, for printing when we type in a single quote or its other uh, brothers and sisters and other little things like that but if we go to language p python notice how it highlights everything nice and easily for us so now it gives us a much easier way to read it it gives us line numbers Things are highlighted, numbers are in red, functions are in pink, um, statements are in blue, and so on and so forth. So, that's what I suggest you use. And if you were to save a file, so I'm just going to save this as example.py, you'll see it already knows it's Python because we set the language to Python. So I'm going to save it as example.py, save, I'm going to close it. Now when I open that, uh, example.py, 
it already knows we're in the Python language. You can see it's all highlighted already for us. So that's how I'm going to recommend you write code. It's great to go and write it in the idle environment. You can see it highlights it very, very similarly. If I type in if guess less than number, you can see it's similar and you can change the colors, but you can see it highlights it in a similar way. Um, you can write it in here, but any programming course in university is going to get you started in Notepad or something similar like Notepad++. And we're going to start the same way. And sometimes just for ease, we'll write it in here and then we'll just copy and paste it into, into the window and then we'll just run it and then we'll overwrite it, of course. But as you see, we get HHH. So we might do that sometimes too. So make sure you have idle available and I suggest Notepad++ as well. Or of course, again, you can write in idle if you have a if you create a, a guest number or whatever dot py file and then you go into idle and go file open and then you can run run module now if you want to create one of those and you don't have notepad plus plus you can just open notepad it's under your start menu and then you can go file save as and then just save it as something or whatever. And where it says save as type, change it to all files and then add .py to the end of your um to the end of your file name. And that will save it as a Python file that you can open up in here, just like our guest number.py. So now that we have Python 2.7 set up and we have idle running and hopefully Notepad++, we can continue in our next lesson by learning some of the syntax, which means rules of the language and what the syntax is for things like variables, which you may recognize from school. A variable would be something like x in, a, in an equation. We could say x equals 5. So variable x is equal to the number 5. Or variable my variable is equal to hello. For example, we'll go over some rules like that, as well as Python's white space syntax which white space is when you put in spaces so that's those characters there or a tab is another one we'll go over that that's the only thing python is picky about is white space so we'll go over that in the next lesson i if you guys um enjoyed this and you are learning something and you want to see more let me know in the comments so that i know to continue i'm not wasting my time so we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And remember, create your way.